worship service experience. Friends, we continue to praise God for God's saving grace and protection in the midst of a broken world. With grateful hearts, we say thank you to our members, to our friends, and all who continue to support this ministry through your tithes, offerings, and gifts. Thank you for your faithfulness and commitment to Hebron Zion Presbyterian Church and its great ministry. Thank you to our choir on this morning as well as our musicians. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Friends, let us pray. Eternal God, merciful God, Gracious God, God of all comfort, God, we come to you this morning just to say thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you continue to do. God, we adore you, your creation, the many gifts and talents you have given all of your human beings. Lord, continue to walk alongside us in the midst of this pandemic and so much civil unrest. God, show us the way. God, help us to stay in the path of righteousness and not the path of evil. God, keep us and remind us of your son, Jesus the Christ, and his great sacrifice made for all of us. Lord, if we had a thousand tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to thank you for everything that you've done. But we just ask that you continue to push us forward, to be a blessing to those in need of a blessing, and to remember to keep the main thing the main thing. That is, Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now we will have a selection from our choir. Not a friend like the lonely Jesus. Oh no, not a one. No, not one. Oh, he will guide. a friend oh like the Lord oh Lee Jesus 
comes to us from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 35. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against, against those who, whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. For you are a rock and strength and redeemer. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'd like for you to think of me this morning from the sermon title, Jesus Paid It All. We all have favorite Bible verses that we use to bring us comfort, peace, and joy when things are going well and when things are not going so well. As a teenager, my go-to verse was always John 3:16. for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. As a young adult, I added another favorite. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 brought me comfort every time I felt weary. Romans 10 and 9 tells us, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. However, I always focus on 31B of the chapter we're coming from on this morning. If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? Is it not a blessing to know that God is always on our side? Even when the world is against us, these verses serve as a reminder of God who is in our lives and the great sacrifice made by Jesus on our behalf. And so this morning in Paul's letter to the Romans, Paul lays out the case for belief in Christ and the gift of salvation that comes along with it. No matter what you have done, God's grace, mercy, and love is always available to you. And Paul's letter serves as a reminder that God never forsakes us. 
And so this morning, the question becomes, what keeps us from being in right relationship with God? What keeps us from receiving the gift of salvation that Jesus gave to us all? Sometimes people say they don't feel worthy of God's love. Yet, friends, I ask you, do you believe that Jesus died for everyone except you? Rest assured that God is a forgiving God, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit work along with God to protect us all. And so some things we just need to commit to memory. We must know and, and continue to realize that God is not our enemy. God is here to teach us, to push us, to do the things that he has called us to do with the gifts that he has put upon us. Some people don't believe that. We all know, saved or not, there will be people who attempt to make your life miserable. There's no rhyme or reason for their shenanigans. Not only do they thrive on confusion, for some people it is a full-time job. Then there are those who believe that it is their job to decide who is worthy of God's love versus those who are not. Yet Psalm 116 tells us, the Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? And so this year, 2020, has taught me and so many of us a lot of things about ourselves, our family, and our friends. In the midst of a pandemic, I am reminded that life is fleeting and love is stronger than any amount of hatred that continues to plague our communities. As Christians, we have hope and faith in the triune God, and it is with that hope that we stand. And we must remember, friends, God is always providing for us. God is always protecting us, even when it feels like it does, he's not there. God is always with us. Verse 30, 32 tells us he did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all. How will he not also, along with, his graciously, along with him, graciously give us all things? How much evidence do you need to remind us of God's love for us? Paul's letter to the Romans reminds us that salvation is free, but once we are saved, we must not stop there. No, my friends, we are called out to spread the good news of the gospel and to make sure we hold up the end of the great commission Jesus gave to the disciples. Theologian Reverend Raymond E. Brown poses this question about Christ. If Christ delivers from death and sin and brings life, how is it that life to be lived? How is that life to be lived, especially since we are still flesh and the flesh is not submissive to God's law? According to Paul's letter, the answer is simple. We must live righteously always, striving to be more like Jesus. Friends, if our hearts are truly convicted about Jesus' humanity and Jesus' divinity, Jesus' life, his re resurrection, and his ministry, we cannot continue living the way that we were living before we were saved. This is not what God wants. God wants us to follow the model that Jesus left behind for us. There is a story told of an old woman who came out of church one day and fell down the steps. Unfortunately, she hit her head on the concrete and died. And as people gathered at the funeral home to view the body, the pastor heard some one trying to make sense of the calamity, saying things like, this must be in God's plan. It was God's will and we must accept it. This woman, she was up in age and God wanted her in heaven. God planned this to test our faith. And so at the beginning of the funeral, the pastor began his sermon with, my God does not push old ladies down the, the church steps. God
God does not push old ladies down the church steps. And so, friends, we serve a loving God, not a God that is against us. And we must remember also that God's love for us is immeasurable. Friends, God chooses us to be a part of God's family. And when we give our lives to Christ, we receive an assurance of pardon and the gift of eternal life. Ephesians 1 and 4 tells us, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. James 1 and chapter 1 verse 18 tells us, He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all God created. Paul's letter to the Romans was filled with love, concern, and encouragement. And as warning about the persecution they would face because of their faith and belief in Jesus Christ. Paul and Jesus knew the pushback that the believers would receive. That pushback could be anything from jail time to death, as well as the loss of any family ties. Through it all, though, God will see us through. If you are rejected by family and friends, it is all right. When God is for you, nobody, and I mean nobody, can be against you forever. Yes, I know you're saying, Pastor, well, some people can hold a grudge until they die. And I say to you, for those people, you pray for them and not against them. Verse 35 in this morning's passage tells us that no human being can be separated from the love of Christ. And friends, as we continue to grow, we must hold on to this. We cannot be separated from God's love as long as we continue to grow and mature in our faith and be prepared to defend the word of God and the things of God. Do not get angry or emotional when you must defend your faith because we are dealing with other people, not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so, friends, I want to remind you of, of just a one thing. I want to leave you with this thought. Think about everything that Jesus has done for you. There's an old hymn that says, Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Those words, y'all, describe perfectly what Jesus has done for us. The great sacrifice made for us. And so I want you to remember that God's love for all of us will never cease. Jesus did not die in vain. His death and resurrection serves as a reminder that our salvation is not a fluke but it is real. God's love for us is eternal. God's love for us is complete. And God wants us to remember to follow the path of righteousness and to be a blessing to other people. This is the word of God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for allowing us to come together one more time to do your good and perfect will. We thank you for allowing us to still be able to worship virtually and by any means necessary. God, we continue to pray for those who are looking for a cure for this virus. We bless those who are on the front lines, fighting day in and day out, trying to keep people whole, trying to keep people healthy, trying to keep people alive. We mourn with those families who have lost loved ones as a result of COVID-19. God, we just ask that you do what you do so well. Continue to be a comfort to those who are in mourning. God, we thank you because we know you are still in control. And no matter how you cut it, your time is your time. We cannot rush you, O oh Lord, because you know what you're doing. But I just ask, God, that you continue to keep us all in the midst of it all. Bring about change, Lord God. 
bring about peace, Lord God. Remind us of who we are and whose we are, not only today, but in the days to come. We lift up those who are sick and shut in, not only in this great church, but everywhere, Lord God. Be with them and guide them. Remind them that they are still loved and cared for. Lord, this is our humble prayer, and we pray it in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you and give you his grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Yeah.